We've often been told that having a range of colors on our plate is one way to ensure healthy eating. But one color has always been conspicuously absent, which led us to the question, is it true that there are no blue foods? Megan Miller from Popular Science Magazine is here to help us find out. Hi, Megan. Hi. So a world is anxious to know, is it possible that blueberries and blue potatoes aren't even blue? A lot of experts think they lean more toward purple. Really? Well, here we have a collection of foods that many people consider to be blue or that have the word blue in their names. How do we know what color something is anyway? We use this gadget, which is called a spectrophotometer. White light is comprised of all the colors in the spectrum. And when that light hits an object, whatever color bounces back is the color we perceive the object to be. Okay. And we have Randy Klimek here from Konica Minolta. He's a color specialist who's going to help us plot these results on a graph. You can see our graph here has the full color spectrum with true blue at the bottom. And the closer to the bottom of the graph these readings come, the bluer our objects really are. All right, let's take some readings. How about we start with blueberries? Great idea. That little white flash means we took a reading. So Randy, plot that on the graph for us, please. Wow, the blueberry actually does not go very far down into the blue area of the chart at all. Which is kind of strange, because this is the one that I thought was going to be the bluest. Go figure. OK, so blueberries aren't blue. Now we're going to do a plum, and I really don't think this is going to be very blue. Ooh, purple. All right, well, these are bilberries, which are a European berry similar to blueberries in America. OK. Bilberries, also not very blue. Much less blue than the blueberries. OK, this is a blue crab. And I have to say, parts of this crab look really blue to me. Yeah, let's try the very bluest part on his claw right here. OK, well, that's our bluest thing yet. It does also inch over into the green area, which makes sense. You can see some olive tones in those claws. Right. OK. All right, here we have some beautiful big shrimp that have tails that look like a nice royal blue to me. Oh. The shrimp are pretty blue also, more blue than blueberries. Now, these are sardines. And from the top, anyway, they look they do look blue to me. OK, so the sardines aren't that blue. All right, here, the famous Peruvian blue potato. Famous, huh? I think it's purple. Aha, that is pretty purple, almost as much as the plums. Somebody ring up Peru. We got to change it to the purple potato. All right, now these are blue corn tortilla chips. The tortilla chips are not very blue. And then finally, this one I think is just kind of funny. It's blue cheese. Yeah, the mold is somewhat blue. Most of the cheese is white. Yeah. I'm not thinking this is going to be blue. I don't think so either. And the blue cheese is the least blue food of all of them. Meanwhile, the blue crab is the winner. But keep in mind, Ted, that you can really see just how far from true blue these foods really are. But we still don't know why no food is really true blue. Plants and animals just don't produce very many blue pigments. Well, what about the foods that tested blueish? There's actually no blue pigment here. These foods contain a compound called anthocyanin, which is actually red, but can appear blue according to certain environmental factors like pH. Why is it so rare? Nobody's really sure, but scientists think it's possible that just really wasn't very important to evolve that pigment. Now, what do you mean by saying it wasn't important to evolve blue? Well, pigments are adaptations that give plants and animals an advantage in attracting mates or avoiding predators. So maybe blue just wasn't all that advantageous to evolve. So there you have it. Even among plants and animals, nobody likes the blues. Mm -hmm.